What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Vice Institute 20 year anniversary. 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for those of you joining live. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I think this is episode 7. Right? I don't know how many we're gonna do, but we got still a few waiting for, for you guys. And uh, thanks once again for joining us live. Of course, we do have a very special guest, but I don't want to call him just a guest because he's much, much more than that. Uh, he's been my, our friends for, for me and Bernard. Uh, he's been with us as long as I can remember. Um, and uh, yeah, so no further ado, I want to welcome the man, the man himself, right? Uh, the GBR master of Bison 2 and occlusion master. Here you go. Hey, okay. Hey, cheers, cheers, man. cheers, cheers, yeah, cheers. Good. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> it's a privilege to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I can't believe, you know, um, Bites Institute is like, it's like it was a baby when I first met her. And uh, now it's just like my own daughter, full grown woman. And uh, just. <laughs> Gonna outrun us all and uh, and uh, keep surprising us. So it's uh, it's just been a great uh, run, and it just keeps growing thanks to uh, you know thanks to your support, thanks to great people like David and uh, and, and and all our uh, and all our friends and, and, and uh, faculty and, and many of you yeah, know yeah. Uh, who are follower of Dr. Bur uh, Dr. Albert Louis at Thank God the Implant Friday probably already yeah. knows a little bit of Dr. Albert Louis. Uh, he practiced in Calgary, so he's not from Vancouver. Okay, yeah. so he actually is flying in yeah. this weekend to uh, uh, come and be our guest at the 20-year anniversary um, uh, celebration. But also, uh, he's here to uh, 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 run his uh, workshop um, for CIR uh, module four, which is the uh, introductory to GBR. Uh, and also, we're running a sutra workshop tomorrow as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you, you just arrived Three today, for right? One. <laughs> yeah, you just arrived uh, yeah. not too long ago. How yeah, was your great. flight? How was that your flight? That was easy. Yeah, no, it's always a pleasure to come yeah. back to yeah. Vancouver every so often. I I hear the sushi is good here. Yeah, so there's a rumor. <laughs> That's right. It's about an hour flight, hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, hour. Yeah, we had to go against the winds, so yeah. it's uh, you know all those Chinook winds, but yeah. uh, that's keeping our. Uh, it was eight degrees in Calgary yeah. today. Time and, uh, time yeah. difference is what? Only two hours? Is two hour time difference? One hour. Just oh, one, one hour. hour, one hour, yeah, one yeah. hour time difference. Yeah. So it's not too yeah. bad. Yeah, it's you not think it's Saskatchewan? <laughs> yeah, Saskatchewan. Toronto's three hours. Yeah, Toronto's three. Yeah. Toronto, that yeah. time difference and and going to Calgary time is huge. Yeah. You know, Toronto, Toronto messes me up. Yeah. Messes me up. Yeah. Um, like as, uh, before we go into uh, your presentation and things like that, okay, we're going to spend a little bit of time and we're going to let them into our world of our friendship and our history. Um, yeah, and absolutely. I'm going to ask a few of the questions. And on, because, uh, you know, um, like yesterday, as I was preparing for this evening, and it really, um, it's been 20 years by this institute, and I tried to re recollect back, you know, when did I meet Bernard? When did I meet? Albert, when did I meet, you know, <laughs> Neki, and when did I meet, you know, all those people, and obviously you're one of the senior faculty, and I've come across you many, many years ago, but it wasn't the bites, you know, yeah. if I would go back, you know, do you remember when first, how we met? Well, uh, I don't want to color this, but I met you in Vegas. <laughs> like last week's gambling, you know, no. Uh, yeah, Las Vegas, conference? Yeah. Yeah, Nobel World Conference 2005 with yeah. Steve Bongard yeah. at the Chrysalis Group. And uh, I kind of heard about you because ah. I, I didn't know who this Young Goo guy was. Ah. And uh, Steve just kept raving about Young Goo, right? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. when I first uh, met you was yeah. when we were in Vegas. It yeah. was the part of the Chrysalis Group. Yeah. Um, Chrysalis, uh, uh, we were... We were Bringing all on four, yeah, to the all on four network to Canada, yeah, to Canada, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So Dr. Bongard had, yeah, gone to that's right. And those Palo, of you know, Dr. Steve yeah. Bongard, he's like the all on four guru, yeah, of all on four. Uh, he, he's a legendary surgeon. He's he yeah. based in Toronto, Chris's Toronto. Uh, his practice is bigger than mine, um, and uh, he likes to fly under the radar. But he's really the you know both of our mentor, yeah, uh, who's encouraged us to uh, you know really go all into implant dentistry. Um, and he's the one who put together this Chrysalis Network project, right? And he invited me, he yeah, invited you, yeah, was... uh, and that's how we, I think, we met, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's, and because of the World Conference, Nobel was, uh, yeah. you know, because he's a Nobel guy, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. We uh, were all, that, all we Nobel were at that time. That, at that that's time, what yeah. all in four was. That's it was right, Nobel's, that's right, yeah. Uh, you know, brainchild. And um, mm -hmm. so we were in the, the Nobel universe. Mm -hmm. 
and um, that world conference it was I think it was on on uh, it could have been like the still on the world record for the the most dentists I'd ever met in one place and it was a, it was big. a big turning point yeah and that's where Steve wanted to bring it to Canada yeah. he was he was in the vanguard of yeah. that yeah and he had people like yourself and and me um, who was just getting into implants that's you know right. quite uh, quite oddly and then so, that's, that's so the rest is history as yeah, they say you yeah, know that's where yeah. we met and, that's right and that's then right. you you knew I was doing a Las Vegas Institute yeah. the occlusion that's um, right neuromuscular dentistry that's right so I came and I started lecturing for you that's right uh, telling I, you a little yeah. bit about, about occlusion I think I, right. I went so far as to say I remember Eddie at that time he said yeah. Albert, aren't you going to talk anything about implants? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, like, what are you going to talk That's about right. implants? I so, said, well, you want me a little bit of occlusion, you know? <laughs> so after we met at Chrysler's, and then uh, before you came on board, it was me and Bernard doing most of our our, right. uh, our courses and the study clubs, and then we invited you in to be a part of our vice faculty, and then a just relationship yeah. that's from there we just kind of grew and grew and grew, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when I think about Dr. Albert Louis, the first thing that comes to my mind is Albert, not the dentist, but Albert, the artist. Oh. You know, and if I were to, to tell the audiences that when I met, I got invited to Albert's house, um, house barbecue, and some of us had a privilege to really meet uh, his lovely wife Judy and his family. And uh, I was going through his house, and I showed all these murals that I said, "Who came and painted all these beautiful murals?" And he said, "Oh, I did." You know, <laughs> like uh, the, all this, and I, that's when I said, "Oh my God, this guy chose the wrong profession. You should have been uh, a like, uh, you know, the true professional artist. I mean, you're that good, right?" I want to ask you, like, if it was for dentistry, yeah. you know, I know you uh, you become a dentist. A lot of our Asian parents go, "Be a lawyer or be a dentist." It was, you know, solid job, right? Okay, yeah. you know, uh, but if it wasn't, yeah. right, you know, what what would have been your any different world, different yeah. dimension? What would Albert Louis be? You know, I uh, actually my first love was architecture. Uh, I wanted to be, um, you know, I did the one one um, lecture and it had my favorite yeah. uh, architect, Ar yeah. Zaha, Zaha. Hadid. Zaha Hadid, and she didn't just do buildings; she created works of art that were curving, mm. that were like, you know, they were like twenty fifth century types of works. And, Amazing, and I she did, I didn't even know she existed at that time but that's who I wanted to be uh, so now I, I guess I can say I'm doing architecture on a mini level <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know creating sculptural yeah. things right yeah. uh, doing full reconstructions yeah. and uh, as well and uh, you know uh, following in your footsteps yeah. a bit and yeah. uh, so being an, being an artist uh, yeah. I but, you, but you've I never been professionally trained no you, no, no. It, self -taught, it came self -taught. naturally all it came natural. natural to me wow. yeah. yeah yeah there's a uh, uh, I'm going to go off on a little tangent, yeah. but when you look at things, if you're a true artist, you actually, you think with the left side of your yeah. brain, right? Instead of the right side, right? No, sorry. You think of the right yeah, side of yeah. the brain. You're left-sided, yeah. all the scientific stuff, yeah. but the intuitive stuff is yeah. all on the right side. And so when, so for me, it was always natural to draw. Like I could pick it up and yeah. draw something right away. Wow. And, you know. Now, that was years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that so much now because <laughs> before I was doing like ultimate detail, right? Yeah. To yeah. the point where, you know, like those Chinese um, yeah. museums, they have like a yeah. grain of rice. You can That's put right. like like a, a whole textbook on there. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do that sort of thing. But uh, but when I stopped doing yeah. that kind of detail yeah. and I started doing dentistry, That's right. I realized I couldn't uh. go back to doing art at that point. I had to do 180 degree difference. That's why you see those yeah. huge murals. Yeah. I had to decompress by coming uh. home and just throwing stuff out yeah. onto the walls and onto but big, I tell you guys, big canvases. Yeah. If you ever get into uh, Albert Lewis' good side, oh. and you might get you guys be are so all lucky. Welcome. <laughs> you might only feel you'll be so lucky yeah. to be invited to his lovely yeah. home uh, and get to see some of his true artwork. Because yeah. that's the part of the side that Albert that I was really, really impressed with, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What do you do for hobby, you know, nowadays? That's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, you still ride? It depends ride? on which decade. Yeah. That you ask me. Ah, right? okay, okay. okay. Now, my my true. If I could go all the way back, yeah. I always wanted to be a Renaissance man. Yeah. Right. Sort of a combination between Leonardo da Vinci and James Bond. Yeah, right? yeah A little yeah. bit of. So I got into scuba diving. I got into rock climbing, mountaineering, wow. sea kayaking, whitewater canoeing, yeah. and, and with my wife, right? And yeah. then we did adventure traveling. Yeah. I mean, I was in Tibet in the eighties. I was behind the Iron Curtain. I've even 
I've even, my wife and I have taken a bus through Gaza years ago, right? Oh, so we, you know, so, so but this decade, and this is an easy one, yeah. this decade, I'm in my sixth decade, yeah. right? This is the decade that I'm living the dream. Ah. I'm living the dream. I get to do whatever I want. Ah. So I'm with Bites Institute. Yeah. I get to do implant dentistry yeah. every day. And so the hobby now yeah. is to not only be a patriarch yeah. to my family, right? But a patriarch, you know, um, with Bites Institute, a patriarch to my my team members. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these girls, uh, a few of them, we've celebrated yeah. our 20th anniversary together. Yeah. So this is the dream, the yeah. hobby that I've worked oh. always towards. Everything was a small step yeah. towards this ultimate yeah. self-realization. And, and you said something yeah. to me. It's like, we don't, you know, if I did this all for myself, yeah. it's not enough. I have to do this with the people around me, yeah. right? And so now I don't have grandchildren yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not yet. No, and, press, and, no pressure there. And but, some of you um, yeah. probably yeah. know Dr. Jasmine Louie and Dr. Albert Louie have the same last name. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> no there's a reason why. Okay, of course, proud daughter, Dr. Jasmine Louie is, and she's also one of our only female faculty doctor. Right. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of Jasmine. And, and of course, you know, you're more than more you're than the best honorary uncle. uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's just wonderful. That's just wonderful. And some, some of the things that the adventure story that you tell me yeah. uh, in Europe is such an early time. It's different world than yeah. is that. And, yeah. you know, like that's the type of uh, uh, um, uh, things that I wish I have done, you know, in my younger years. Um, but I mean, that's just amazing. That's amazing. Um, Tell us a little bit about um, your love for, you know, how GBR Love became, yeah. you know, like uh, I know that you've taken some of my courses in earlier on at a cadaver course and things like that. Right. But at a certain point, I, I mean, a lot of my faculty doctors, as they progress, they kind of choose their own little branch of a path, right? Yeah. Uh, like Bernard, he found his passion in the soft tissue, uh, like Ho Young, he found his uh, passion at locator over denture. Neck, he found his passion in uh, thermolar uh, wisdom tooth, and they become very well recognized. And and for you, at certain point, you come to a GBR, and but not like unlike a lot of the GPs who get into that and they kind of nibble and dabble and stop doing it. You actually embraced it, and start really going on today. It's almost like a second win because your first win was your occlusion. You are. One of the, the top guys that I know who really understand occlusion really well. But your second win at some point was that the GBR, you know, became kind of like your secondary passion, right? Yeah. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, so it was also, it was, it was desperation, I guess. <laughs> That's the way I would, you know, I mean, as much as we loved uh, our, our um, introduction to all on four, and as I will talk about soon, is that after a few years, we started to have problems with um, all of our failures, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's unfortunate. I mean, it was a great idea, great paradigm. Mm -hmm. But the the issues that we had in terms of failures, so, and, and, and when you're a GP having failures, it's hard enough being a GP and trying to succeed. You know, there's sometimes a bit of a glass ceiling there yeah. when we're um, uh, overlapping onto the specialists. But... If you have a failure, then it's kind of a double whammy against mm. you. So I felt I needed to do this to make sure that the ones that I am doing, that it was more predictable. Mm. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the lecture, a little bit mm. more predictability or mm. a lot more predictability. So as a result of that, I needed, um, I needed, I, I felt like I was uh, beaten down mm. Mm. and I needed to get up and win. Mm. And, and, and so I, I, I was first introduced, I, someone had taken a course. Uh in Europe yeah. and showed me the bone that was gained after that. I says, mm -hmm. I got to take that course mm -hmm. and ended up going to see uh, Urban, 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 right? Urban, Urban, yeah. 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 So yeah. Urban was yeah. just the, the, you know, the, the beginning of that. Mm. And then I found that after some time, um, as I'll talk about, yeah. uh, that even that had its limitations, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And so, and then meeting Professor Son, and yeah. then now as, a, as the evolution, uh, you can do pure, like a sausage, or you yeah. can do pure, yeah. um, you know, Santa abutments. You can do pure other things. Or, I found that now I have the tools uh -huh. to mix them, mm, to mix mm, them mm. in an algorithm mm. that makes sense mm. 
to each individual patient, mm. right? Mm. And then, of course, you have soft tissue on top of all of that. Mm. So that's kind of where I realized that I needed to get good at this mm. so that I could regain my confidence mm. in mm. implant dentistry mm. and, not, and not have to, um, you know, take chances, yeah. right? Or, yeah. or, or yeah. have things, you know, sometimes things yeah. work. And yeah. That's great, and sometimes it doesn't work, yeah. and it's not, and it's not yeah. so great. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think that's why you, you know tonight's um, uh, topic is quite interesting. Is because you know GBR for general dentists who are venturing into this journey of implant dentistry. This one thing that many of of us GPs struggle initially, and and that's the part that they find that it's so hard to get to the level where things become easier and predictable. Yeah. I mean, it's never easy, but, uh, you know, that, that confidence of, okay, you know what, I'm going to grow bone here and here. Because, um, you know, for many of us at the beginning, it's really a, uh, disappointing, right? You, 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 you know, put so much money and time and effort into something just to know that, is fail, right? right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but also, we need to learn how yeah. to do this because nobody if, likes that. Yeah. yeah because if, one of the things that we kind of stops us from venturing to bigger cases in our earlier career is what if things don't go wrong? How do I? How am I going to? Yeah. You know, backpedal and get me back to the point zero that I can redo this again. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. To be yeah. fair, um, when we took all in four, the idea of all in four was to. Avoid grafting. Yeah, yeah. It was to hey, let's 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 avoid the sinus. Let's avoid the mental nerve. So let's angle these guys, put on angled abutments, and then of course they didn't think right in five year studies, ten year studies. You know, they were good, but then beyond that, you know, these things started causing problems. The angulations, you know, the food traps, all of that stuff, the soft tissue mm -hmm. concerns. All of that was, so it made us kind of lazy, right? Yeah. Because it made us to say, hey, let's dodge this mm -hmm. and, and, and take yeah. the money and run. And yeah. then now, yeah. you know, it's, it was, it's boomeranging. It's yeah. coming back. It's almost right? like so, a full, full story. It's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's very, so, yeah. very so, interesting. So that was yeah. the biggest yeah. driver for me yeah. to get into GBR. So, hey, I needed, yeah. I needed some, um, I need my confidence yeah. back. Yeah. I needed to cover my yeah. my rear end. That's right. You know, That's and, right. And and there's and these people, my patients, yeah. they trusted me. Yeah, yeah. They put a lot of money. Down. That's right. That's right. And you know, so and I'm, I'm still yeah. I'm still, yeah. but now I'm recovering. Yeah. Uh, and I feel really confident. Yeah. I says, look, I'm sorry this happened. Yeah. yeah. But I have a solution, That's and right. I'm not charging you for That's it. Right. right. You know. Yeah. And, it's uh, like a reconciliation. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. now, yeah, second chance. Now at, I get yeah, yeah, I get to come back, and you know, because these people. Um, you know, that's been even a better, yeah. you know, um, uh, feeling of, of, uh, accomplishment is yeah. that, um, you know, cause there is no longer, it's like, it's like a work of art yeah, that yeah, was a yeah, failed work yeah. of art and I've come and rehabilitated right. and now, that's right. you know, I feel, um, it's a full circle. Yeah. It's a full circle. Yeah. yeah I totally get it. You know? Um, so no further ado, I know a lot of you guys are waiting. We're doing a lot of like priming here and teasing you guys what the presentation is going to be about, okay? So tonight's topic, ladies and gentlemen, the evolution of GBR for general practitioner, okay? Enjoy. Hello, everyone. This is Albert Louie again. I am honored and privileged to be a part of Bites Institute faculty for the last decade and a half. Thank you all those years ago to our founder, Dr. Mark Kwan, for the invitation. And a warm welcome again to all of you. My topic for this 20th anniversary special edition is the evolution of guided bone regeneration for GPs. Now, very importantly, my subtitle is Define Gravity. This man is one of my heroes. Do you know who he is? Actually, everyone on the planet knows who he is. You've seen him before. Let me show you another one of his portraits. There, now you know who he is. Bruce McCandless was the first person to conduct an untethered free flight in space. This was on February 3rd, 1984. And this month, well, this marks the 40th anniversary 
year of his incredible milestone. In essence, McCandless was defying gravity. And this is exactly the same sentiment we have here at Bice Institute. We too have been celebrating defying gravity for the last 20 years. It all kind of started back when Steve Bongard, Dr. Bongard, founder of the Chrysalis Group, that was ground zero for where we met, me and Dr. Mark Kwan, and the rest, as they say, is history. We were defying gravity with All on Four. Now, All on Four was a revolutionary concept. We were mesmerized. We jumped on the bandwagon for a dizzying decade, doing full arches left and right. Here's one of my first successes. And 13 years ago, this patient is how I started with him, and he's still very happy because his teeth were defying gravity all that time for him. We all felt like superheroes. We were vanquishing edentalism. But here's another routine case, right? And all on four for the mandible, it seemed like the right, perfect solution. And voila, another satisfied customer. Here it is at a year later. It looks pretty good. But whoa, the same 13 years had elapsed. And what happened? The bone loss was just devastating. Here's what we started with. So much for defying gravity. I didn't just lose altitude. I crashed. And it really shook my confidence. And then I began to see as I was doing other implants, singles here and there, I get a failure and then another failure. Doing implant dentistry suddenly became more like gambling. Most of the times I would win. All the time I should win. But once in a while, I didn't know why I had some cases that failed. So over the years, I realized I had to evolve as a GP. And I did a lot of soul searching. But more importantly, my journey resulted me in finding out how to avoid these problems, but now how to fix them. I just published an article in the International Journal of Future Dentistry chronicling how I reset and relaunched. And in my conclusion from this article, I said, it is incumbent upon us to expand our surgical skill sets to provide successful outcomes. In order to defy gravity, we need predictability. We all know that tissue is the issue, but bone still sets the tone. To ensure our implants survive, it's not enough just to slam them in one implant at a time, just like we were taught to do in all on four, because in all on four, we were dodging, dodging anatomical landmarks. You know, we were avoiding sinus lifts. We were angling implants. We were avoiding the nerve. We were angling implants. And this is what led to us often compromising our positions with these implants and not having enough bone. So we need guided bone regeneration, a.k.a. GBR. In 1998, Dr. Daniel Boozer introduced to the world the concept of contour augmentation, this idea of having more bone so that we can put the implant into. And in this article, one of many that he wrote, summarizes contour augmentation and how it relates with GBR. And what are those properties that are so important? Well, biocompatibility, mechanical barrier, making the space, and protecting the blood clot underneath. So let's look at this. Biocompatibility refers to the graft material. Now, the gold standard is autogenous bone. Dr. Istvan Urban, whom we will meet later, says there are 40 osteogenic factors in autogenous bone that are not available in other graft materials. The mechanism of bone regenesis relies on TGF growth factor 1, beta 1, sorry, TGF or transforming growth factor beta 1, and bone morphogenic protein 2. Now, guess what? In the International Journal of Molecular Science, this 2021 article says that platelet-rich fibrin, yes, our friend PRF, can activate TGF beta-1 by inducing BMP2 in the cells of the mesenchymal lineage. Wow, PRF is one of our secret weapons, right? And it was originally the invention of Professor Dong Suk Song, whom we will also meet later. 
and he was also the inventor of sticky bone. Today, we know that contour augmentation as graft envelope, as the graft envelope. Boozer explained the why, but what do we need to know to achieve it? In 2006, Dr. Hong Le Wang gave us this landmark PASS principle paper. And what is PASS? Well, primary closure for suturing, angiogenesis for the blood supply, stability for immobilization, and space, yes, our final frontier, contour augmentation, the graft envelope. PASS. So let's summarize this. Boozer gives us the graft envelope. Wong gives us the past principles. We now know the why and the what. But how do we do this? So let's look at two seemingly unrelated items, sausage and Santa. My journey took me next to Hungary, Budapest, Hungary, that is. And I met this man, Dr. Istvan Urban, at the Urban Regeneration Institute. And I took his complete comprehensive course on sausage DBR. Now, sausage DBR, there's umpteen articles written about it. And it is, by the way, an officially registered trademark for Dr. Istvan Urban. The urban sausage is xenograft and autogenous bone mixture, resorbable membrane, and titanium tax to stabilize. Now, here is the order of the skill sets one will need to accomplish this. Flap design, autogenous harvest, flap releases, graft mixture, membrane, an elasticized membrane and resorbable, tax, and suturing. Now, we don't have time to go through all of the detail of this, so we only have time to review maybe one site. And here, for instance, we'll use the posterior mandible to illustrate some concepts. Now, this is a right mandible with a deep defect. We're gonna use several examples throughout this lecture. One of the most important concepts, of course, in this area is the area of the mental nerve dissection, okay? So this is something one has to be very familiar with the mental nerve anatomy. And once again, that's part of your homework as a surgeon. And here is a beautiful example uh, of such a dissection. There's my uh, mental nerve dissection. And now another critical concept is periosteal releases. Now we don't have time to go into that in detail. It's not within the scope of this lecture to give this. However, I'll just give you a taste of it because it, it is so absolutely essential to release the flaps to allow for primary closure. Otherwise your graft will fail. So this is for demonstration purposes only. It's an advanced lingual technique. And it's also another type of technique that is also available, like such as brushing and that, that's um, maybe less dangerous, okay? But all of these techniques, they need to be uh, taken with some mentorship and hands-on courses for sure. But let's get back to the flap extension. There you have the flap extension. This is something that most young surgeons have a lot of trouble with in this concept of GBR flap releases. Both the buccal and the lingual have to be amply released, otherwise you can kiss your graft goodbye. So next we make a template from the membrane's packaging material, so that's already sterile, and then we use that and we cut that and we place it in the mouth, and over time we get the template to fit exactly where we want it, and then here it is overlaid over the membrane, and then we cut it out, a silhouette of it. And now here we are fitting it in to the mouth and it will get wet, so mind your working time. And the membrane is draped. Notice that it's soaking up a lot of blood and it will stretch. This is a desirable elastic property, as you'll see later. And we'll tack down one side. We use a mallet in our precision pins to stabilize one side of the membrane. We put a few of those in. And now we can grab our graft mixture that we've taken autogenous bone and mixed with xenograft and then we stuff it underneath the membrane and then we stretch it tightly over creating some tension bulging it so that elasticity is utilized and then we punch in the required pins on the 
other side to create the bulging sausage form. And now you guys know where the sausage form comes from, right? So here's another view of it, and we can isolate the tax there, and uh, we can see where they look like on the panorex. Now, the next important concept is suturing. And this is a beautiful diagram which shows the concept of eversion. It's not enough just to approximate a flap together and hope that they, they heal. No, you have to over-engineer your flap. You have to uh, have enough release so that you have enough flap material on both sides and then that tissue will overlap and you can see that overlap creates a, a huge band of contact and that anastomosis will uh, certainly facilitate the closure and prevent infection from getting in. Now here's what my flap looked like and you notice that there's one deficiency there and so we went back in after the photo and here's a lingual view of it. And once again, we've got the aversion that we've needed. And this is also tension free. Any suturing means that the final result has to be sutured in a way that's tension free. So if it isn't, and then, it, and if it looks like the shirt on the left, you have open gaps and that just invites bacteria and in. that is incomplete closure. So when you do suturing, it has to be completely sutured so that no gaps appear. If you push on it and there's tons of blood and air going back and forth, then you haven't achieved eversion. You haven't achieved primary closure. So we did this properly. So two weeks later, look at that. That's beautifully healed. And then we wait six months and we go through our GBR reentry and look at that. Now we remove the tax. The resorbable membrane is gone. But look at that nice juicy bone volume increase. That vertical defect and horizontal defect is, is now sealed up. Now, there wasn't much vertical uh, in this case, but it was mostly horizontal. We place our implants and here are the healing abutments six months afterwards. Uh, then we go back in and these are tissue level implants, so they look pretty good. So nice, beautiful augmentation. Now we successfully created horizontal augmentation in that or that deep defect. But what about vertical? And so this is where we had a lot of problems when I first started doing sausage. I wasn't getting the vertical. And once again, I was feeling that I'd hit rock bottom again. Well, Urban, when he published about the sausage technique, his very first book, major publication, uh, Vertical and Horizontal Ridge Augmentation came out in 2017. But he realized that a lot of his students and a lot of people around the world were getting frustrated with not being able to, to achieve the vertical part. So he published another book called Vertical 2 about five years later. And in it, now he starts introducing ridge augmentation using PTF mesh, okay, T PTFE mesh. So this is a mesh reinforced membrane. And, and so that means that you'll have to retrieve it, okay? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I hate mesh. I mean, he calls it Sausage 2.0. So this is sort of the successor to Sausage 1. But this uh, titanium reinforced mesh is just a pain. I have never been able to get mesh to work for me. And it's very frustrating. So I had to ask myself, is there an easier way to tent up? And speaking of tenting, Dr. Mark Kwan and I had the luck and the pleasure to meet Dr. Dong Suk Song. And he uh, presented to us Son's augmentation, new, wait for it, tenting abutment. So tenting is this concept now of maintaining this so that we can avoid using mesh. He calls it SANTA. Nice acronym, right? So SANTA comes in many uh, um, variations, but the most common ones are SANTA 1 and SANTA 2, and this is their millimeter height. We're going to focus on SANTA 2 for now because this is about the vertical augmentation part. You can see that when uh, SANTA is placed on top of implants, we get beautiful vertical augmentation. And so there it is. This is the uh, last piece of the puzzle I was looking for, defying gravity. And we're going to go back to a mandibular case. So let's fast forward to another lower right jaw. Uh, once again, we've got some deficient sites. We've exoed that lone um, 
uh, bicuspid and we've placed our implants into these uh, really deficient sites. You know, you can see the threads are exposed. And now we put the Santa buttons on top. You can see them highlighted here. And then after that's done, we can place sticky bone and pack that around them. So you can see how the umbrellas provide this tenting and protection. And finally, we stabilize the membrane uh, with some PTF and suture that up. Or in the sewn technique, we use just PRF only and no membrane. Now, once again, that's a, a more advanced topic for another advanced course for another time. But let's do the primary closure. You can see all the beautiful eversion that's happened here. And then we can see that the Santa abutments allow that bone to be protected. And we are once again defying gravity. So six months later, we go back in. I do a flapless reentry. And let's just fast forward. And we've got a beautiful finish of the uh, prosthetic restoration and implant bridge. Now, if we just compare where the original bone contours were, you can see that we've got not only horizontal, but we've got some vertical augmentation. So here's the um, pre-op and the beautiful post-op. Now, you're going to ask, okay, well, what if we can't put implants in? Well, if you don't have implants, Dr. Sohm, once again, his genius, he invented SBB. So as part of my evolution in guided bone regeneration, I learned to use these. This is Sohm's Bone Builder, and these are tenting abutments that can be placed wherever you want, not where there's an implant, but where there is some sufficient bone. So once again, that's not within the scope of this lecture. Let's just summarize our wall of fame now. So we have uh, Boozer, we have Wong, and we have, now we have Urban with his sausage, and now we have Professor Song with Santa. And so this completes the how of guided bone regeneration. So if I can just really uh, put this into a nutshell. There's only four things you guys really have to know. Envelope, pass, sausage, and Santa, right? <laughs> so bone sets the tone. And we do so using guided bone regeneration to make sure that foundation of that tone is really, really solid so that you have a big contour envelope or a contour augmentation so that we can place our implant in. And once we do GBR, that will allow us to defy gravity and make things predictable. Bruce McCandless said of his accomplishment, it was a mix of personal elation and professional pride. It had taken me many years to get to that point. And so with GBR, I feel exactly the same way in my evolution. When I can get it right, when we can get it right, when we can nail it, we can get, nail it. We can get that mix of personal elation and professional pride. It took us, me, many years, and it will take many years for all of us to get to that point. Because of that, we too can now defy gravity. Thank you very much from all of us at Bites Institute. Well done, buddy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was good, great. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Oh, I'm levitating. Oh, there you go. gravity. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I, I, I love about Albert Louis. There's always a storytelling yeah. aspect to it. And at the end, I don't remember anything but the story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're oh. so good at that. Like each of our faculty, Dr. Dave, we have their own unique skill, a unique way of delivering the content and Albert is one of my my favorite yeah, yeah. okay well Bernard uh, Bernard taught me a lot too. <laughs> so he's he's uh, he was one of those story he told me that storytelling is uh, yeah. is one of the keys to people remembering stuff so oh absolutely right. absolutely I'm just gonna check uh, if there's any Q&A there's a lot of a lot of stuff that I yeah. couldn't put on yeah. because uh, you know in you only got 15 minutes and mm -hmm. it's like uh just like when paul you know he did a, you guys did a great job but paul mm. did a great job with full, full arts reconstruction how do you teach full arts reconstruction <laughs> in 15 minutes 15 right? minutes <laughs> yeah you know gbr is um you know it's it's, it's also a, 
uh, a micro universe in yeah. itself, right? With uh, a lot of macro implications for sure. Like somebody were to ask me, how do you get really good at GBR? Like I'm yeah. not talking about just a simple little lateral yeah. augmentation or like, you know, four wall defect or I'm talking about like a three dimensional, like a sausage or yeah. PTFE or like a vertical, you know, I have one answer. Uh. Do many, fail many. <laughs> and what doesn't kill you will only make you stronger. Okay, I think there's uh, there's some truth to that, um, yeah. because for me, the one of the the earlier um, pain of learning GBR was I took so many courses, but so many instruments. Oh, yeah. Right, you name yeah. it, I bought them. Yeah. I have a museum of them. Actually. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I call it museum of GBR waste. Right, <laughs> yeah, and then. And I tried to mimic technique. Yeah. And I think that's where the, my, my mistake was. I yeah. thought that technique makes what succeed. And I come to realize that after having done so many surgery and failed many and succeeded many as well, <laughs> is that it's not the technique. It's the concept and understanding biology. Right. And really, at the end, it's all about understanding healing. Right. Uh, technique... It's like you said, how to do it, but there's mm -hmm. more than one way to cook an omelet, right? Yeah. But it doesn't matter how fancy the technique is, if your fundamental is not strong, like suture is so important. Right. Releasing paracetamol is so important. Yeah. Uh, if you don't do the details correct, and you only know how to do details correct, only after you understand the principle. Yeah, and right. then that's when I come to realize that, ah, you know, once yeah. I come to understand the, 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 the biological fundamental principle and then convince myself to spend the time to take the releasing, take yeah. to do everything, take to do the tacking, take to do yeah. the eversion sutures, yeah. and then I start to, you know, earn the, the fruit of success, yeah. right? But you cannot be successful right away. you got to unfortunately go yeah. through the hell of sleepless nights. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, you just you know, have to. I, you know, there's no other way. Yeah, I have a little clip that is yeah. one of my favorites. And Dr. Sven Urban said, you know, yeah. most GBR cases fail because of the first five minutes of surgery yeah. and the last ten minutes of surgery. Yeah. So yeah. what does that tell you? The common denominator there is opening yeah. and closing. So if you open and you don't and you tear your flap and it's all kind of messy and it's hard to put it back together and mm. it's not properly released mm. then how can you close it and when you close it uh, just like that shirt i saw you yeah. know, you know the, our, yeah. i saw on that uh, and i said i got to put that in my yeah. slideshow and it's got all the little holes in it right you can well you know and dr uh, dmitry ivanov um you know our uh, one of our um uh group experts he's a periodontist and he said uh, in one of his courses that he was teaching he said if you can push on it and if you see blood and bubbles coming out of there then it's not closed enough, right? Mm -hmm. That's not primary closure. So when you look at these things and you say, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna talk to primary closure, blah, 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 blah. Primary closure means just what Urban said. It has to be closed, not closed most of the way, not closed some yeah. of the way. It has to be closed all of the way. Yeah. And that's what our suture workshop we're gonna talk about tomorrow night. Right? Yeah, tomorrow we're gonna to focus yeah. on the fundamental. You know, so the amazing thing is, even I talked to doctors who've been doing implant dentists for 10 years. They don't really understand the fundamental principle of flat management yeah. and suture closure. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. yeah, They don't know the mechanics behind it, but also the principle behind right. what the right suture is. So yeah. we're gonna focus on that tomorrow. It's a sold yeah. out course. We got 42 doctors registered already. 42. Yeah, oh, okay. so uh, we're having it at the hotel because we cannot hold it at the Vice Institute. I have a good question here from yep. Dr. From An uh, Dr. Andrew Alsbrook. Hey, Andrew, how you doing? Uh, his question is, uh, Dr. Louis, what kind of POSA protection or instruction do you tell the patient to protect to ensure success? Mm. Um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, Andrew, like many of us have, have experienced, you give them instruction and everything, and then two weeks later realize that that graph that you put so much money and effort into, turns yeah. into and do all that. And proper POSA instruction is one of the ingredients, I think, yeah. to now, it's not the only ingredient, but one of the ingredients that we gotta let the patient know, uh, you know, what to follow. What do you tell the patient? Well, 
you know, as you know, I'm an occlusion expert, right? Suppo supposedly, when you tell your patients not to chew on it, you trust that they're not going to chew yeah. on it. But, you know, they will chew on it. So um, if you had to count on the patient all the time, it's not going to work. So you, you have, that's why your closure has to be good because you're not only compensating for the biology that needs mm -hmm. to close, but you have to compensate for the fact that the patient's going to abuse it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think I just, uh, just like what we did all in four, sometimes Steve Bongard would tell us, yeah. oh, you know, I only got like 15 Newton centimeters on each of my implants, mm -hmm. you know? So I just tell them like, mm -hmm. just to have a liquid diet, right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, like anything else, it's occlusion, yeah. occlusion, and occlusion. So you have to tell them, that's the number one thing. You, yeah. you pound on it, yeah. uh, no matter how well you do. I have one of these cases where I had a beautiful Santa mm -hmm. GBR, mm -hmm. and I, I did everything mm -hmm. right, and I forgot to check my Essex. You know, mm -hmm. and I slammed the Essex in yeah. because the patient's frozen. They didn't yeah. feel it, the yeah. pressure. Yeah. So she did exactly what I told her. Don't yeah. take that Essex out for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And she just kept thinking, I'll keep it in. Yeah. Or, you know, but unknown to me. Yeah. Because that one little thing, I didn't check yeah. the pressure that yeah. was on there on the Essex. Yeah, it failed. I, I got an exposure of my yeah. Santa, which I normally don't get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I followed all those principles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I just neglected that one little detail. And yeah. just like you said, it was all about in the details. So, yeah. so if if that to me is the number one cause of, um, uh, you know, it, it is patient related complication is. Yeah. So if you can. If you can tell your patient yeah. that, uh, give them whatever they need, you know, whether it's uh, Essex that yeah. keeps their teeth apart or whatever, you know, it's it's uh, and, a nighttime or a night guard yeah. or, or and, a night guard that sort of like keeps that part yeah, or like a open, par right? partial dentures, like posterior. If you're doing a vertical ridge augmentation of the posterior, I tell them not to wear that partial denture. Yeah, yeah, because the pressure mediated any, any bone resorption is very real. Um, you know, unless it's a highly aesthetic area that you got to give them something, um, you know, but you really, really need to let the patient know that you don't want to be functioning with these prosthetics right. where you've done a three-dimensional vertical ridge augmentation. Yeah, because it's, it's that's, that's a trouble. Another qu great question. Yeah. Um, where is it? Do, 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 do. do you always do a xenograph, allograph, mix in GBR? Uh, okay. Always. Is is never a, uh, always right? Okay. You know, what's your guideline? Okay, right? so I I had to put the xenograft <laughs> allograft in there because that is the classic urban technique. So if I'm giving a proper homage and and um, uh, recap of that, the reason why they also use xenograft is um, because of the religious. Uh, thought about desecrating the body and not using allograft. See, in North America, we don't have that problem, right? Mm -hmm. But in um, you know, in Japan yeah. and in Korea, is it? No, is Korea is taking the Okay, so so in Japan yeah. and in um, and in Europe, uh, there is this aversion to using human bone, right? So xenograft was their next natural choice, but xenograft is so hard, right? So that's why you need autogenous bone to mix with it. Now. Yeah. We want to simplify things for ourselves, right? Because for us, that means if you get autogenous bone, you have to harvest from another site. Mm -hmm. So now you're creating another wound. You're creating more and more morbidity. And so this is why PRF is so wonderful. That's why I threw that slide in on um, uh, TGF beta 1 and um, BMP2 is because PRF has been now proven that we can get that. So if you can replace autogenous bone harvest with PRF in, in, in some way or form uh, to get that, um, that uh, bio, uh, osteogenesis. And then if you, can, if you can do that, then you can use allograft. And then allograft uh, is more approachable. It's actually yeah. cheaper because to process xenograft is really expensive, right? So you, you actually make it more, a little more mm -hmm. affordable and you make it more approachable. And remember, so we're, we're GPs, right? We're not doing this out of universities for research yeah. in that. We're doing this on an everyday basis. So this is my evolution was to yeah. uh, use the things that I can that work for me and, and so that I don't crash and burn. Yeah. It's an interesting question too because um, I used to harvest autogenous a lot. Yeah. And I'm one of the very few GPs I actually harvest both from the hip. Yeah. And I used to do that literally uh, in my uh, early 2000 or mid to even uh, I think last my hip graft harvest was two thousand and uh, about ten years ago, thirteen, yeah. fourteen. Yeah, I learned from uh, 
Dr. Smiler. He was a big hit guy mm. back then. Mm -hmm. Now he's a big Saigoma guy, but he uh, taught me how to uh, enter iliac, harvest yeah. it, and I was aspirate some of the uh, uh, stem cells from there. And so, uh, this is before, uh, b right before I I met Bernard and learned PRF. But right before, until then, I was going to the hip yeah. for a predictable thing. Um, and and then I met Bernard, and then he just rocked my world, changed everything, yeah. and I stopped going to the hip. There's no need for it. And then later, I come to realize that what's more important than autogenous bone or whatever it is used is to maintain that space right yeah maintain that space contour orientation. Yeah, yeah 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 graft envelope yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, uh i come to realize as long as i can maintain that space and if that can be turned over in the next about four five six months into an autogenous bone then it's successful xenograft alone for me never worked because it yeah. never turned into a true bone unless i mix with a significant amount of harvested bone where right. which was my hip bone yeah. um, um, so but also some of the xenograft took almost like two years to be resorbed no right? my dad i yeah. put a, a, my xenograft 20 years ago yeah i opened that i still there man Jeez. 20 <laughs> years okay so like, oh xenograft yeah, another okay? 20 year anniversary <laughs> unbelievable it's not just my dad i'd like at least a several dozen patients you know like the great thing about being implanted for long enough you get to yeah. to go back in that site that you worked on before right you go in in the, to redo the implant right okay and xenograft still there yeah right yeah. yeah um so that's one of the situations so for me i really respect the um, understanding of that all graft must at some point become a real bone Right. Right. If it he doesn't, yeah, yeah. Well, then yeah. the, what's the point if it doesn't, right? It has to. It doesn't matter what yeah. technique it is. And and what makes it become a better bone is nothing got to do with technique. It's all about letting body heal. Yeah. Okay. That's very, very important. You, you know? create the space. Yeah. And then you allow for angiogenesis. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, without blood supply, yeah. Without nutrients yeah. and without waste removal, yeah. you're dead in the water. Absolutely, I've and, done, and the bone, it, yeah. just, it just dies. Right? And I've done a lot of uh, a sausage and uh, PTFV membrane-mediated vertical bone region, uh, augmentation with just a pure allograft alone. Pure allograft alone. And people say, oh, that's never going to work. No, as long as my suture holds up, mm -hmm. as long as the patient's healthy enough to heal. Yeah. Primary closure. Yeah. Primary closure is the most important, right? Yeah. That takes us to the uh, one of the last question. Any place for Dr. J. Lab? Any place for Curry technique in this evolution? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you answer that first, <laughs> and then I answer it. Okay. I don't call it Curry. I call it block bone graft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. 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 I mean, in one of my more detailed lectures, I, I went through different things. Remember, this is evolution yeah. for the GP, right? I mean, uh, if you're a GP, you're not. You know, I can I can tell you. You know, you you you're not going to do hip harvest, right? You're not going to do chin harvest. I mean, this is stuff that you need to do every day. You need to get your patient out to go back to work because they're on their lunch hour, right? You know, so I mean, so yes, there's room for curry, um, but once again, it's another harvest, and you, and then you have to you have to really dick around to make those nice thin yeah. plates, and then keep that all sterile, yeah. and then put uh, not just tax in, but you got to put bone drills in, right? Yeah. And then you've got everything else on top of all of that. So if you're skilled enough to do that and you want to go do that, go right ahead, yeah. right? I, I just don't find it in my evolution that it's very practical if I can find something else that works for me. But Curry is a great technique for those really severe defects. So that's really good. And uh, and, and it is like block, like you say, it's a block, block graph. Okay, so block grafting in itself. Like I know Urban himself doesn't like block graph because he says... Um, how are you going to get the blood supply into that block, right? So that's the hard part. So that's why he's really into particulates. But once again, there's people out there doing it. And once again, it's another skill set and it's more complex. So if you, you know, if you, if you're going to be doing GBR, I think I would, I would suggest go ahead and master things, but don't, don't jump into yeah. block graft or curry. I mean, that's, that's several other surgeries yeah. that, that, that things can go sideways very fast. So master one yeah. thing at a time, right? What we have to understand is whether it's a curry, because I've done a ton of block graft. Yeah. I used to teach doctor how to harvest block from the chin and the ramus. Yeah. And I, I used Not to do pretty. that. Not pretty. I used to do yeah. that quite routinely. 
Um, but last time I harvested a block, I can't remember. It's more than 10 years ago. Yeah. I stopped doing it because I don't need to. Because you, what you have to understand is um, whether it's a curry, whether it's a sausage, whether it's a, a PTFE, uh, a, a titanium supported, uh, doesn't matter what it is. The reason it succeed or the reason it fail is all the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah. tell you that right now. The reason it succeed is not because it's curry, not because of its sausage, not because of titanium. It's not the reason. The reason they succeed is because you did your space maintenance and suture closure properly. Yeah. That's the reason. And the reason it failed is not because it was not curry or it was not sausage or it was not titanium metal. The reason it failed is the same reason all three of them will fail, right? Okay? Poor flat management and poor uh, not following tension-free suturing. That's yeah. the reason why. Yeah. I first, guarantee you. The okay? first five minutes of surgery yeah. and the last 10 minutes yeah. of surgery, once again, like, you know, Dr. Urban was yeah. very prescient yeah. in, in nailing those two things, yeah. right? So if you rush in, you know, if you're rushing in to do it, that's bad. And if you're rushing to finish, yeah. which is what I used yeah. to do, because your next yeah. patient's here, ah, I better suture. You know, yeah. you cannot suture yeah. fast. I, I, I've tried it. You cannot suture yeah, fast yeah, yeah, yeah. and hope yeah. that you did the best job you could. Absolutely. You absolutely. have to. I, I spend yeah. more time suturing yeah. sometimes than I do putting in the implant. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Way more. Absolutely. Way more. Yeah. It's, it's like whatever you do, yeah. You do your surgery, and then I double that amount yeah. of time to, well, do this, to. to do the suturing. Yeah. You have to. You, ha you, you have, have to spend. It the has time. to be a Zen-like yeah. experience. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'm a seamstress. Yeah. Seamstress when yeah. I'm doing the Louis yeah. Alberton. Okay. <laughs> Louis, <laughs> Louis Alberton. Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Louis Vuitton, <laughs> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Vuitton suturing. <laughs> suturing. Yeah. Louis. There you go. Louis. That's right, right. Doctor Albert Louis, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Um, <laughs> joke aside, like um, yeah, that's why, like I said, technique to me. Don't really matter that much. Yeah. However, if you really wanted to curry, yeah. my suggestion is to learn Dr. Sohn's uh, tooth block. I think that's probably a better approach because it doesn't put yeah. patients through additional, because they swell more from the Ravens yeah. harvesting than the actual surgical side, okay? Yeah. How much har uh, swelling do exactly impact the third molar uh, extraction? That's the exact amount of the swelling that patients go through when you do the yeah. Ravens block harvesting. Swell. That's exactly it. And but way Dr. Son does tooth block is it extract the tooth, you make it too thin, you decalcify it, and you block those, it's just as good, if not even better. Yeah. Okay. But he will also say the same thing. It's only a technique. You still gotta do proper suturing tension free. So I would suggest to those doctors who are having a hard time with the GBR, stop trying to learn so many different techniques or material. Choose one and become master at it mm -hmm. and master at flap management and tension-free flap right. and eversion Absolutely. Louis Vuitton suture, okay? <laughs> because in two weeks' time, if it opens up, that means you did not do something yeah. right. Okay? You know, think of it as a, a ship, right? And your ship's got a hull breach, yeah. right? Now, it doesn't matter how much stuff you do to repair on the inside. If your breach is still yeah. open, like it's just washing away yeah. and it's just getting contaminated. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not it's not allowing itself mm -hmm. to have some any meaningful yeah. healing and and therefore you know you're you're gonna yeah. you'll literally yeah. you'll you'll sink. And that's why a lot of us are starting more move more into Dr. Professor Sohn's uh, technique because yeah. once you master flap peristeal release tension free suturing, there's nothing more simpler for body to heal than Santa and his uh, Sohn's GBR yeah. mechanism because it just simplifies a lot of stuff. But like I said, his technique is not what makes it simple. It's just that you need to master the, the, the tension-free closure, yeah. and then all the santan, everything that you yeah. use, it just makes it things heal the way it's supposed to heal, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, before we go, okay, uh, David, okay? So oh, some of them yeah. were asking, when is the, the Professor Sohn's uh, uh, upcoming workshop at Bice Institute? Okay, this course has been filling up pretty fast. We still got a... Just a few more spots left, okay? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Like the Professor Sohn is coming to Canada, yeah. I think in Vancouver uh, to lecture, I think for the first time in Vancouver area. Yeah. He did come to Toronto, I think several years ago. Uh, so this is a two-day hands-on uh, workshop where he's going to go over Santa, uh, Sohn's GBR umbrella technique. Uh, also, he's going to go over tooth block. Uh, he's also going to go over the... Uh, 
uh, what's the other stuff? Uh, the the the. SPV. Yeah, maybe. yeah, SP something I cannot pronounce properly. Okay, yeah. so he's gonna go over a lot of lot of a uh, lot of things that he's very well known for. Okay, so it's a two day. It's a pretty intense. Uh, but I, I think those of who you really want to get to know about bone grafting and become you know get over that hump, right? Yep. Get over the hump to create bone the way you want to create bone. Okay, I think this is going to be a wonderful experience. And also, it's one of those rare opportunities to meet the legend, the icon himself. He's a wonderful guy. Um, you know, he's a great friend to both of yeah. us, and he's a very generous man. Uh, so we get to actually spend uh, you know, good quality time with him, so I highly recommend it, okay? So you let Angela know if you're interested in uh, taking his program, and then we'll see you then. Okay. Uh, other than that, I can I think let me see. Oh, Eric Parks, of course. Yeah, yeah. Eric Park. Eric Park. I think that one's almost getting full. Uh, that facial rejuvenation. Facial rejuvenation. That's, yeah, facial uh, rejuvenation. Yeah. yeah, a lot of women doctors are taking actually. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I wonder I'm, why. I'm sure. I wonder I, why. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facial rejuvenation. Uh, very very powerful. Now verification code for tonight. Uh, AGD. AGD credit, one AGD CE credit is BITES, B-I-T-E-S, 20 A-L-G-B-R. Okay, so BITES 20 A-L stands for Albert and G-B-R, okay, Guided Bone Regeneration. So use that code to earn your verification code, okay? All right, awesome, okay? Um, yeah, so um, uh, I just want to take this moment to uh, thank my dear friend Albert Louis. Okay, oh. you know, thanks for spending our uh, time with oh, me. My pleasure. And oh, my. thanks for uh, shining the light on our uh, our past twenty year history yeah. together. Okay, <laughs> where we met. Cause sometimes you know, like, you know, I forget things, yeah. but you know, this is a good opportunity to kind of reminisce yeah. uh, what we share, and also we appreciate you know, how far we've come, and also at the same time get excited about what the future holds for both you and I. Yeah. Okay, wonderful, Albert, okay? Thanks very much. Yeah. It's been my honor and pleasure. To, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, we still got, two, you, we, we still got <laughs> two more days, man, okay? Oh, okay. We All got right. some more, two more days, okay? <laughs> Take care. And uh, yeah, for those of uh, 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 are, are new to uh, a Begin by Global Implant Network Facebook, okay? Mm -hmm. You type in, thank God, Implant Friday, TG, uh, IF, and they'll have a lots of the yeah. great posts that Dr. Louis posts regular basis every week Friday. So enjoy his post as well, okay? Um, no, uh, uh, before we go, I want to thank all of you who enjoy, uh, joined us live, almost 30 of you. Thanks for uh, spending time with us yeah. and celebrating this special uh, 20 year anniversary of Bison Institute. You guys take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.